Hello, my beautiful friends. My name is Maria Khodiva and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am so, so, so excited to welcome a very special <laughs> guest, a ballerina, a ballet teacher, and a business lady, mm -hmm. and a great, great, great talented YouTuber. So excited to welcome you here, Claudia D. Hello! <laughs> Hi Claudia, it's so nice to have you here on my channel. You so too, today Maria. we're doing such an exciting video. We are going to be comparing and chatting about our ballet school experiences. So I was studying at Vaganova Ballet Academy in Russia, St. Petersburg, and Claudia has a experience with Royal Ballet Academy in London, England. So it is so exciting to be comparing our experiences and comparing what like ballet wise and non ballet wise and we are going to compare all of the different categories and just chat about it and figure out what is different what is similar and I'm so excited to know about royal ballet school really i know i can't wait to hear about veganova okay so i've prepared the categories that we're going to be comparing our schools with and the first category is going to be about location and building. Yes. So, tell Royal me Ballet about school. It. So, the Royal Ballet School is located in Covent Garden, which is literally in central London. And when you go to Covent Garden, have you been there before yet, Maria? Yes, yes, you I've have. been there. It's, it's so beautiful. honestly such a magical place in London, isn't it? Yeah. And yes, basically yes. there's the company on one side and there's also the school on the other side and they're connected via the Bridge of Aspirations. So there's a beautiful bridge that connects the two buildings together, which I think as a student when you walk there and you see it in real life, it's honestly, you know, so, so amazing. And now we're going to get stuck into the studios. So the studios are so incredible. There's about six different studios and every single day you check the timetable and you see which studio that you're going to be dancing at for that day and they're obviously just so pristine beautiful high ceilings there's one main studio called the devalois well it was called the devalois when i was there and it was the studio that everyone loved to dance in because it was in right in the center of the entire school and mm. honestly the building is just so pristine, so clean. And like I mentioned with the Bridge of Aspiration, whenever we had to get lunch every single day, there was a Royal Ballet School and Royal Ballet Company canteen where you got all your food. And basically we'd have to walk across it every day and that'd be where the company was. So we'd see oh, wow. all these amazing ballet superstars like Marinella Nunes, Alina Kodjakaru, and we'd all like be there looking in the studios and seeing what they were rehearsing. And it was, it was always just so inspiring doing that. Yeah, that's um, so inspiring. Really. Yeah, and another amazing memory that I have is one time like I was in the canteen and I loved Marinella Nunes and she was there getting her lunch and I had to sit next to her and get my lunch oh and she said hello. God. I know. Wow. And that was just like every every day that would happen. So um, oh, wow. it was always just such an amazing building to be a part of. That's what I love. Yeah, what about you? Right. Tell wow. me about Vaganova. This is, this is so interesting that you have the company and the school right next to each yeah. other and interacting because yeah. Vaganova Ballet Academy is not located near the theatre. It's like about 30 minutes walking from Marinsky. Oh, wow. But okay. we, yeah. So it's like a different so, but, location. Yeah, it's a different, totally different location. But Vaganova is actually near the center of the city, like almost the very, very center of the city of St. Petersburg, wow. Nevsky Prospect. And the street, the street of Rossi, Rossi yeah. Street, yeah. is one of the most perfect streets in the city because it? it was built after a plan and it is mm -hmm. 22 meters high. Whoa. 22 meters wide and 220 meters long which is this is like a perfect massive. proportioned street and Jeez. it is near the main uh, drama theater oh, okay. so the front of it i think we'll show the pictures on the screen yeah, right yeah. now so yeah. the front of it is alexandrinsky theater which is the main drama theater in saint petersburg and the street yeah. is just gorgeous it is really beautiful in this yellow stone in this classic style how and the building of Vaganova Academy is really huge yeah. and we have many, many studios. I don't know, 
I think more than six actually, but some of them are really, really small. Yeah. But yeah, the main yeah. studio is called Petipa Studio and oh. it is where actually Petipa created most of his ballets, which wow. is so exciting. That's incredible, yeah, and isn't it? Like uh, legendary and uh, traditions, all of the traditions were born there, which is so yeah. like we were honored to pass a lot of exams in this studio. Of course. And, but actually, to be honest, this main studio is really, mm. really uncomfortable to dance in <laughs> because it has a very slippery floor and it is old and the windows are oh kind of God. also old and yeah. in winter it gets really 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 cold and sometimes it was like plus 13 degrees celsius in what? winter in this studio and we had to exercise there so really? even though it's a very beautiful and legendary studio it That's is still they, a little bit strange heaters? Did they have heaters or anything when it was really cold? Yes, they do. Yeah, they do have heaters, but it, they don't really cope with such cold as uh, in Russian winter. Of because course. right now it's minus 20 degrees in St. Petersburg and it's right freezing. Now. Yeah, right now. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so, so it's, it's currently like 27 degrees here where I live in Australia. <laughs> I know, it's, so, it's actually so hot. I've got the aircon on. <laughs> Oh wow, no, different world, but yeah. That's amazing. Is the building like, is it quite run down or is it modern? You said it was like traditional. So is it, yeah. is it how does it sort of look? Does it look very well kept or? The building is very well kept and yeah. the architecture because it's a like popular sightseeing destination obviously because this street is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, it is clean. That's good. But on one side there's Vaganova Academy and on the other side there's like this uh, business stuff, something. Okay. And, um, but inside the building is also really gorgeous. The stairways with the carpet. And so nice. on, um, on this stairway there are lists with the graduates, with the famous graduates starting from Vaganova yeah. and like to Olga Smirnova and the like recent stars and yeah. every every single graduation is written down which is super inspiring That's amazing. and uh, it ends on the seventh seventh floor Whoa, is from seven? starting from the zero floor and to the seventh floor so which seven. is really really inspiring and shows all of the history of Vaganova. That is amazing seven levels that's crazy <laughs> that's massive what a big building. How many levels does Royal School have? Royal was when I was there one two three four and you mm. had to go to the fourth level to go across the big famous bridge of aspiration so you always had to mm. climb up the, to the top stairs get there, cross the bridge. Yeah, it's so, oh, so awesome. pretty. How amazing to hear that. Whereas Royal Ballet School is quite modern to look at. Like it looks mm -hmm. quite like a lot of glass. It looks very modern from the outside. Mm. Isn't that interesting? So very different. Yeah, yes, super yeah. different. Perfect. The next one is really, really like a burning question. So about auditions and how to get into the school. Yes. Okay, so um, my experience of getting into the Royal Ballet School, I was scouted at two competitions. So one of them was the Prix de Lausanne, and, which I'm sure most of you know. And the other one was called Alana Haynes Awards, which is held in New Zealand. And New Zealand's, you know, about a four hour plane journey from Australia. I think it's four hours. Anyway, so basically normally to get into the Royal Ballet School, a lot of the time dancers don't really get scouted. Normally you've got to send in a video audition if you're from overseas and then from there they shortlist about a hundred dancers and those dancers then get invited to what's called a finals week. And then they basically have all the dancers that got accepted into the finals week in the building at the Royal Ballet School in London and then from there they select 15 dancers for each level. So that's the normal procedure. Um, but for me and like a few other people, when you're scouted, they basically offer you a position right there and then at the competition. But it was a little bit different um, for my personal experience because at the Prix de Lausanne, the director wasn't there. It was one of like the, the second in charge. And basically he said, I think Gaylene Stock will really love you, but unfortunately she's going to have to see you in person. So she was judging a competition that I was doing like two months later and I did it and then she offered me a spot right there. So that's how I was taken in, but it's, it's different for everyone, isn't it? 
So it's interesting that it was different for you and mm. it can be different for you attending Royal Ballet School. But for Vaganova, it's actually pretty much the same if you are attending for the first grade. It is yeah. pretty much the same procedure. It is a lot of competition, actually. Yeah, but yeah. I remember I was just reading a book about Maya Plisetskaya and she was telling that uh, there was when she came to audition, there was almost no competition at all. Wow. And... Um, at one time, you just needed needed to want to audition. You just needed to want to get in, and they accepted you because yeah. it was a hard time for our country. But then there are times, and people are telling the dancers are telling that there was like um, thirty people for one place auditioning for one place. So wow. huge, huge, huge queues, and a lot, a lot of people because ballet is really popular, of like course. football in Russia. Is it actually and of very course, popular? Girls more. Whoa, very popular. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, girls more obviously, but the boys also. The boys also had competition. Right now, the competition is not as big, mm. but it is still like around 10, 15 people for one spot, Jeez. which is still huge. And the procedure itself is like you have three tours, three levels of audition, yeah. and it is happening in the first three days of June. The first, oh, wow. the second, and the third of June. Yeah. And the first yeah. level, the first tour is they just see all the little kids. They're just wearing their underwear, girls and boys separately. What? Poor, poor kids. They're just like, you know, freezing um, oh, in these God. big studios. And there's this uh, commission board and they see your extensions. They see your arch, your flexibility, just wow. lifting your legs with their arms and they bend you back just with their arms, the Vaganova teachers, <laughs> which is this so is a very important part about Vaganova. <laughs> yeah. They show like in every documentary, the poor girls in their underwear, They're just like standing getting... there and just like being bent <gasps> like the teachers. But this wow. is how it works. And then they see your like coordination and mm. how danceable you are and uh, the boys uh, will do like the marching thing yeah. with the marching music of and course. the pianist will play the music for them and the boys will uh, the girls would do the polka like oh, polka across nice. the studio which is so cute yeah. but yeah this is the first tour the first day and then the second day is the medical um, tour yeah so you'll have your like body checked with yep. orthopedist and like your bones and if you have any problems with your health and your like eyes and stuff so a lot yeah. of things and some people get knocked out after this day because they're like just not suitable and they check the length of your toes and stuff so really? it's also a little nerve-wracking and then the third tour on the third day like it's a lot right that's it that's a lot because at, at the royal ballet school especially to get into the upper school like so you've got the white lodge the lower school and then the upper school i know upper school definitely we didn't have the checks like that like, I know they, they check our turnout and things like that, but it wasn't, and I didn't even have any checks because I got scouted at a competition. So they just accepted me there and then I just turned up on the first day. But for a lot of people, they had to have just their turnout. But your process is very intense. That's a lot. <laughs> so the third day, actually, I didn't, didn't finish oh, it. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> So the third day is uh, the same as the first day, but it is uh, just so less people the final round yes. and it is the same, but just the same procedure for less people and it's happening in the bigger studio just to see the kids better, wow. I guess. So yeah, that's a you lot. see a lot of crying kids after the third round because like yeah. it's, it's such an emotional process, but then, you know, when you have all of the education and all of the exams, you kind of remember how these kids were crying and it is like a little bit less dramatic because the full drama is happening during the education, obviously. Wow. How old were you when you got accepted into Vaganova? Uh, actually, you get accepted to the first grade of Vaganova after finishing four grades of your general education. So the ordinary school, you finish four grades and then you get accepted when you're the fifth grade of uh, general education and it's around 10, 11 years old. So. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So that's similar, when, similar to White Lodge, the lower school. Theirs is sort of, actually, I think theirs could be a little bit younger, maybe nine. 
and then upper school is you have to be 16, 15, 16. So the next question is how many years is the education? Yes, yeah, so for Royal Ballet School, uh, you can join White Lodge, as I said, when you're much younger. So when you're, you know, eight, nine, ten. But I'll talk about, I guess, from my experience, the upper school is just three years. So you join when you're 15, 16, and you graduate when you're 17, 18, or sometimes 19, depending on the person. I personally graduated when I was 17 and um, went into the company when I was 17 because I joined the first year at the Royal Ballet School when I was 15, 16. And then after six weeks, they moved me to second year, which was very, oh, wow. I know, very odd. But my parents were very happy too because obviously the Royal Ballet School is very expensive. At the time when I was training, it was like 80,000 Australian dollars a year, which is a lot to train at a school. And my parents honestly couldn't afford that. They had to sell their house and like re-mortgage their whole house for me to go there. Yeah, because I was only given a half or a half or a quarter scholarship. So when they moved me up to the second year, my parents were very happy because it means one year less of fees. <laughs> so they didn't have to pay as many fees, which was good. Um, but it is normally three years and it, I guess in those three years, it's it's very different, and I'm sure you'll say this as well, but in the first year, you're taught more of a Vaganova me method, and we usually had the more Russian teacher. Then in second year, we were taught more of an English me method, so basically it was very traditional Royal Ballet School, Royal Ballet Company, and in the third year, you got to pick which method you wanted to go with. Yeah, which I think was... Yeah, it was great because it sort of gave us a lot of versatility. Like by the time you graduated, I understood, I had a basic understanding of Vaganova and the British method. And third year, I could really go with what I felt I, you know, matched and suited. So it's, it's quite different. How about you? How many years is it? Uh, it's Vaganova, you have eight years. Eight years. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's like a whole... Um, process of education and it was when I got accepted to Vaganova it was nine years but then during my process of education it got shortened to eight years wow. but when they were um, educating for nine years they got they were getting bachelor degree right after nine years so the higher education yes. uh, but when they changed it to eight years um, we are now only getting the special, the secondary special education. I'm not really sure if that's how it's called, but it's yeah. something like this, secondary okay. special education. And you have to study for three more years, like just theoretically, just theoretical disciplines to get yeah. the bachelor degree, which is right now I'm studying at this theoretical level at Vaganova yeah. and finishing, finally finishing my higher education and bachelor degree. And this is my third year and I'll be like a bachelor, I guess. Fully graduated, and wow. Yes, the ballet education lasts for eight years. Mm. Uh, the first five um, classes, five grades are just, you have to still study like maths and chemistry and physics and mm. all of that stuff. So you have the ordinary education plus ballet subjects. Got and it. the three last years, you mm. have more of like uh, like obviously more ballet disciplines, which we're going to talk later in the next question. So it's like a higher education. Cool. I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, yeah but in, in total eight years and wow. uh, it's pretty much Vaganova training all the way through and we don't learn any other styles, which is like only traditions, traditions, traditions. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Do you know what? Um, Coming from Australia too, obviously I had to finish my education as far as I could in Australia and that was equivalent to the end of grade 10 in Australia. That's as far as I could go before I had to fly to London to join the Royal Ballet School. But there was a dilemma because when I got to London, their schooling is completely different. They do A-levels, they do something that's completely different. So when I got there, I actually almost had to stop my education, which is not good you know i i really wish that i still could have completed grade 12 and still did what i had to do but at the same time because they weren't linked there was actually no way of me doing it and back then it was like 10 years ago um the education that i was having in australia 
um, the only way that they could give me all of my documents was to send them to London, all these big papers, because it wasn't electronic like it is now. Isn't that interesting? So I had so to almost... So by the mail... What was that? Yeah, by the mail. By the, the, mail. By the mail, yeah. Yeah. So I had to pretty much stop my education. And when I got to London, they had a special setup for international students. But it wasn't, it, in my opinion, it wasn't very good in comparison to what I was getting in Australia. I like it for you that you were able to sort of stay where you were and almost be consistent in your education because it means you got to complete everything that needed to be done. Whereas for me, it was like very disjointed and I feel like I should have finished my education, but I couldn't. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, we also have international students as Vaganova and yeah. they are, it's, it, there are some difficulties with them of completing their education because they are just passing the exams um, at their schools, like going to their countries like in summer and passing the exams and like sending the documents and all of this stuff. And I know it's difficult for international students at Vaganova as well yeah. because they have to finish their education at their countries. Exactly. Is, that was, yeah, quite hard. And I think nowadays it's kind of a little bit easier because you could just do it all online. You know, nowadays, if I was at the Royal Ballet School now, I could just do the whole thing online. But back then, they'd have to post it all. <laughs> and it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't viable. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I know. It's funny. Funny the way it works out. The next one is your favourite, I guess. <laughs> it's about uniform. <laughs> <laughs> the uniforms. So, at the Royal Ballet School, it's basically, there's a different colour for each level. And when I was there, there was the lilac which was first year so i had that uniform for six weeks then it is like a royal blue for second year and then for your graduate year it's this maroon color um and honestly they're you know they're beautiful leotards and it felt so special getting them i remember i you know landed in london ran to the freed shop with my mom and we got like eight of the same leotards so i had you know lots for all the days that i was going to be there and it was all very exciting, you know, and it seemed so exciting at the time. But one thing I forgot to mention in my YouTube video <laughs> was that the Royal Ballet School, they had back in the day a very iconic tracksuit. It was this like navy blue tracksuit that you could just throw on over your leotard. And we all used to love it. And it's, it's kind of amazing because even when you'd walk the streets and you'd go on the train or the tube, people would almost recognize you for that tracksuit. Like everyone knew it. And I, I used to love it. I think I've still got my tracksuit actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. But That's the uniforms, so cool. yeah, the uniforms were nice. They're like a traditional cap sleeve. So a nice cap sleeve leotard, I had like a little ruche at the front that you could like pull on the inside to make the ruche like more or less. And it had like a relatively low back and it was comfortable to wear every day. But we used to like always lift up to make it more high cut, <laughs> make it more comfy. Yeah. At Vaganova too, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, to make the legs longer. Yes. That's the hack. <laughs> so what about you? Well, the uniform also got changed when I was studying at Vaganova. Yeah. First, when I got accepted, it was, well, traditionally it was black camisole leotard, but for the exams, all of the different classes could make uh, an order to make the leotards of their uh, like color, yeah. the whole class to wear color. We got, for example, we got first dark blue, then we got um, this um, dark violet dark purple and then we got this light green and we were making them for the exams for the first three years and i still uh, uh, have these leotards and the matching skirts yeah. and it is um, during the year you could actually wear these leotards um, to the classes and it would be okay if like some of the girls in class would be wearing black and some of the other girls would be wearing like a green or a dark blue as long as it's dark and it's clean and it's camisole it's okay and no design of course but then the uniform got changed and to transfer it from form to uniform actually and um, then it got changed to wearing Grishko camisole leotards and three colors yeah, first three grades were this very, very light blue color and uh, matching wrap skirt. Yeah. Then uh, fourth and fifth grades were this light purple, like very, very light wash purple. Yeah. And the um, 
last three grades, like the high grades, were this coffee with milk color, which I'm sure you reviewed in your video. Yeah, I saw uh, By that the way, one. guys, we'll put the link to Claudia's video in the description if you want to watch it, if you missed it. So, um, yeah, and this coffee with milk one, which I wore the most at Vaganova. I wore the light purple one for one year and then the coffee with milk one for three years. Coffee and, with milk. Yeah, so Grishko leotards. And, but for the exam, you could also make like different styles, uh, buy different styles, for example, like with this uh, crisscross detail at the front or with like a halter neck. But uh, the concept stayed the same, just like camisole and uh, very clean and wrap skirt of corresponding color. So did you all have to wear a matching skirt? Yeah. Where every day they let you wear skirts? Um, well, usually they really ask not to wear the skirt to see the legs, yeah. but um, it depends on the teacher, obviously. And our teacher was uh, kind of kind. She was not really interested in showing our legs, but she was more interested in teaching us really. So uh, she let us wear the skirts, which was amazing for some girls. For example, some of the girls in our class were really always wanting to take off the skirts because we wanted to see our legs. And yeah. some of the girls were really against it because they were like, no, I don't want to show it to everyone. So we wore skirts often. Did you wear skirts? Or no. Were you allowed? We weren't allowed to. They never let us wear a skirt. If Yeah. Even like warm ups, the only thing we could wear was the tracksuit and the leotard. That's it. Oh, really? So no yeah. like leg warmers? No, nothing. Mm. Mm. Nothing. And your hair had to be in uh, a French roll. If it wasn't in a French roll, like you'd almost have to redo it. Like it was very, they were oh, very particular wow. with, yeah. <gasps> well, they oh, wouldn't, so they wouldn't particular. make you redo it, but they'd sort of just look at you and say, okay, you should, you should change your hair. Because mm. I, I guess too, they're trying to, you know, set a tone and they're trying to set us up for the professional world even though the professional world's so different oh, so particular to your school actually because we we could wear different hairstyles obviously and all of yeah. the girls were like doing braids and like doing high bun really? or low bun or like all different styles because uh, everything else was set for yeah. the ballet class but you could actually wear different warm-ups that's for sure Wow. And, um, but no very big jewelry, of course. And no. there were some scandals with girls getting little tattoos and, well, <laughs> yeah. Tattoos, <laughs> <scandals>. oh no. <laughs> yeah, but actually this girl kept her tattoo and uh, she's now at the Marinsky and it's all good for her. So yeah. it was not even that strict, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think anyone in my level got a tattoo. <laughs> Or well, actually, I think maybe one boy did, but yeah, it was kind of like rebel to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And in the mornings when we'd all like warm up, there'd be some girls that like wouldn't know how to do their hair in the Royal Ballet French roll. So there'd be girls doing each other's hair quickly before class and yeah, it's very, very different. Ballet class and ballet subjects, the Ooh. core of the <laughs> education. This is interesting. So at the Royal Ballet School, when I was there, it might have changed a little bit now. Um, basically, we'd have ballet class or school work. But as I said, because I wasn't really doing the proper Australian schooling that I was used to, the Royal Ballet School, they set up a special system for the international dancers, which was basically you had to write an essay on any topic. It could be anything. It could be like about the sun, about grass it could be about anything and i picked sylvie gim <laughs> i hope i've said her name right sylvie gim so anyway i wrote a big essay on her and that's all i had to do which seems ridiculous but anyway that's what i did and then basically if we weren't doing schooling we'd be doing ballet class so it basically rotated the first half of the day was always on rotation then basically we'd have lunch and that would be when we'd go across the Bridge of Aspiration, go to the canteen and look through the company studios and see what they were all rehearsing and greet and meet all these famous ballerinas. And then basically we'd come back and then in the afternoon we'd either have character, Pilates, contemporary, pas de deux or solo variation classes. So again, they were all on rotation. So 
from like 1.30 to 4 o'clock, we'd probably do about three of those classes. And then the next day, we'd do another three. And it just kept rotating like that all the time. So in total, we'd do like a part de deux class maybe two or three times a week. And then the same with the contemporary and the Pilates and all of that. And from there at four o'clock, we'd basically all in the studios, we'd all just sort of play music and dance and like do fuetes and go crazy. And then we'd basically go home, go back to the dorms and sleep and then repeat the next day. So that was sort of like our yeah. schedule and the classes that we were doing all the time. How about you? How long were the, the, the classes? How long was ballet oh. class uh, usually? Ballet class was normally an hour and a half. So mm -hmm. just an hour and a half. And then most of the other classes were an hour and a quarter. So mm -hmm. they sort of mm -hmm. varied a little bit. Sometimes before an exam, there might be two hour classes, but very rarely. It was always usually an hour and a, hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, uh, as for me, mm. we had our ballet class always for, well, the standard of like a lesson at yeah. any Russian school is 45 minutes. And Got it. like the break in between is either five minutes or 15 minutes. So we had our ballet class, the mm. main class uh, for two lessons. And yeah. it was um, and plus a break in between, which made it one hour, 45 minutes long. Got but it. actually okay. during the last years of education, when we got to Madame Kovalova, Lyudmila Valentinovna Kovalova's class, my favorite, amazing, amazing teacher. She oh, was wow. uh, the teacher of Diana Vishnova and Olga Smirnova and Kristina wow. Shapran and many, many other gorgeous dances. So we always had lunch after the class. Oh. And you can imagine what happened. Like 45 minutes lunch after the class. But of course, we stayed in the studio, you know. Like yeah, of we, course. We'd uh, do some more center work or jumps or we'd be making the combinations for the exam or we'd be rehearsing during that time but uh, she was always keeping us in the studio and then we yeah. had to run to our next subject because we always had class and then lunch and then the other ballet subjects so for example we had partnering yeah. well during the last years of education yeah. we got partnering for two times a week for mm -hmm. all of the special subjects for for one hour and a half yeah okay so Duet for two times a week, character two times a week, acting right. two times a week. Acting? Um, yeah, Whoa. acting class, yeah. That's different. So what would you learn in acting? Would it be like about all the different ballets and mime? Yeah, yeah. We'd be doing like uh, parts of different ballets like pantomime from like Giselle, Sophie, or uh, all of the classical ballets like Bayer and stuff like the gestures um, yeah, amazing. or we'd be like trying to be in a state so like we're falling leaves or we're like the boiled pasta or something cool. or we're like the wind so i don't know so all of these like silly but very useful things in my opinion and then we'd be doing some uh, choreographic pieces as well um of leonid yakovson yeah, uh, yeah this is a famous russian choreographer that made like this new style of acting. Yeah. They are very, very emotional pieces and mm. really, really nice to improve your acting skills. And for exam, we'd be preparing these uh, pieces, which oh, is really amazing. interesting. And we paid a lot of attention to acting actually while at Vaganova Academy. Mm. So after, after the class, yeah. we'd be really, really like running to the next special ballet subject. So we, of course, had no time to have between. lunch, like maybe just munch and a little snack really? in between. And then we had to like really, really run. But also uh, when we were little, mm -hmm. we had historical dance for the first three years, mm -hmm. only two times a week for 45 minutes, which was just like learning some gavots and minuets and yeah. like uh, about the history of like ballroom dances and stuff. Wow. And then we started having character um, at the fourth grade, yeah. two times a week, um, 
from the fourth to the graduation year, so for quite a long time actually. Yes. Character is really important at Vaganova. Yeah. And partnering and acting only starting from the sixth grade till the eighth grade. Got it. So it was like certain things at certain levels and experiences yes. depending yes. on what grade you were in. Yeah. Yeah. But character always stayed. And mm. also there was one subject, really interesting one, mm. uh, during the graduation year only. It was the classical heritage during which we learned um, the corps de ballet parts for all of the classical ballets. So for Giselle, for Swan Lake, for uh, what else? For Sleeping Beauty. So and important. For, um, yeah. I mean, so that's, that was interesting important. and that got us prepared for the company work for sure. Yeah. So just learning the repertoire. Wow. You I know, like it's funny you say that because in our final graduate year, that's when we started to learn repertoire but we'd almost um, learn it and then we'd pretty much have to go straight into the company rehearsals and do it with the company. So they'd almost teach it to us when the company needed extra dancers because maybe mm. some of their company dancers would be injured. So they'd teach the school graduate dancers quickly, then we'd have to go straight into the company rehearsals and it was mm. petrifying, so scary. Can imagine, so yeah. <laughs> but I remember. Also, um, actually, very useful to have the school and the company so next to each other. Yeah. Because then you can really just run back and forth. Totally. That's what we'd always do. We'd have to run back and forth. And sometimes we'd even be in our graduate part of deux class or ballet class, and the company would urgently need people. So we'd have to leave that class and go straight to the company. Yeah, and the, and the company would select certain people they wanted to work with. So the company would go, I want to work with Claudia, Frankie, and, the, and they'd list certain people they want to work with, and then those would be the people that would go. Oh, wow. Yeah, very yeah. interesting. I think Really, they like integrating. Yeah. Integrating dancers into the company. They were. So normally after, that would like happen in the first month of graduation year. So normally within the first month, people normally, normally knew who was going to get the contracts because who would be mm. working with the company. Yeah, very deep. Were your teachers strict? Are they like really strict? Mm. Like, I wouldn't say they were that strict, mm. but some of them definitely were like tough. tough but yeah. most of the time my experience was well, I was really lucky to be at Madame Kovalova's class and she was really passionate about ballet and passionate about teaching us ballet. Mm. And she was really strict at times, but she was, you know, like genuine as yeah, well and yeah. um, honest and kind. So even when she was strict, she was still really kind to us, which made it like a lot easier for the final years of education. Of course, because it's so exhausting as well. You're dancing for so many hours a day and then sometimes if you had to perform with the company as well, like it's quite exhausting mentally, physically, all the time, mm. isn't it? Oh, wow. So you were also performing with the company during your graduation year. Wow. Yeah, mm. yeah. So sometimes even in second year, so the year before graduation year, they would pick some people to work with the company. So you might be working mm. with the company like two years before you even oh, wow. joined the Royal Ballet, yeah. Oh, wow. And you, we used to love it too, because not only for the experience, but because you learn so much from all the company dancers, but even as well, they used to give us all these pairs of point shoes. <laughs> mm. And because point shoes are so expensive, I was always, and my family was always so grateful because they were just always so expensive and, and we'd go through them so fast. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, that's very interesting. Because we also have, um, like this experience of integrating dancers into the companies, but mm. that is much more rare. Got and so for example, just a few dancers got a chance to perform at the mm. theater while they were still studying at the academy. Wow. And so, yeah, so I was lucky to start rehearsing Apollo, Terpsichore from Apollo while I, I was uh, during my graduation year at Vaganova. And, but I performed it already when I graduated and be became a member of the company. Wow. But it was so still wait. a magical experience. Did you, did you then perform that while you were still at school with the company? Yeah. 
Uh, no, I performed it after I graduated, but oh, some okay. people uh, from previous years performed it like the solo roles uh, during their education still. Wow, so. that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, solo it's a magical roles. experience, definitely. It's, it's a whole different world, the theatre. It us. is. But uh, wait, were your teachers strict? Yeah, so I my teachers, I would say the first year, she was the Vaganova Russian teacher. She was probably the strictest. And then in the second year, it was another lady that was the English style. And she was similar to what you were saying. She was very passionate about just giving us as much knowledge as we could in that one year that we had her. And I remember at first, because I got moved up, I was doing six weeks in the Russian and then I had to go straight into this English syllabus and I found it really hard to adapt and change. So I remember at first I didn't have such a great relationship with my second year teacher, but I think over time it was good because I started to adapt more and get used to the English method. And then in third year, we had a teacher that was really understanding with both different styles so I wouldn't say it was super strict but I think as well every every person that attended the Royal Ballet School like in Vaganova too we all had so much respect for the teachers and that was so important because we respected the teachers and what they had to say therefore they didn't have to be you know yelling at us or doing anything crazy. So the next one is non-ballet subjects and general education. So for my experience, like I mentioned before, it was very different for an international student because obviously our schooling was so different in Australia. And then by the time I got over to London, it was completely different systems. So I couldn't continue my education in that way anymore. But I thought I'd talk about a little bit to do with White Lodge as well, because I remember my experience would be very different to the girls that were English that were already living in London, they obviously started in White Lodge when they were very young and they had to continue through year eight, year nine, year 10, year 11, year 12. And then obviously they would then keep their schooling in first year, second year, third year. But what I remember really vividly is because I couldn't really do any schooling, like at a night time or of a night time, all the English girls would be, you know, studying and writing things down and they'd be very busy. And sometimes like I felt like a little bit lost, like, oh, what do I do? Because I didn't really have much to do other than write my big essay on Sylvie Gim. <laughs> So basically, I would just end up stretching and doing my exercises while these English dancers, they would be really busy studying. So I think it's amazing for the girls that obviously were living in England already, they were able to continue their education right the way through, which is good. Is that the same for you, Maria? Yeah, yeah it is the same for Vaganova. You start when you are finished with your four years of general education, mm. um, the state system, and then you continue at Vaganova with these ordinary subjects like math and chemistry, physics and history and Russian language and English language and all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you continue, you even have to pass the state exams of this uh, state system, yeah. um, the exams on maths uh, and Russian language that are um, for sure you have to pass them and then some two other choose to subjects like history or English or geography or something or Got sociology it. and um, so you'll have to pass these exams and then during your um, this would be during the fifth year, the fifth grade, and then yeah. during the seventh grade you will have to pass the other exam, the other state exam, wow. um, the Russian language exam. And then when it's uh, the sixth year, you yeah. begin your like higher level education, the secondary special education. So during the first five years you'd be having uh, the short lessons, 45 minutes each, and then during the three last years uh, when these uh, special theoretical ballet subjects start, um, they'll be one and a half hour, so wow. uh, big, big uh, classes. Yeah. And the subjects would be like history of ballet, history of music, history of uh, theater, and like mm. psychology, sociology as well, and uh, lots of these like academic uh, 
adult subjects we yeah. were really like honored and really proud of ourselves starting this like yeah. acad academy like university almost education when we were at the sixth grade mm. and yeah so you have to pass exams like at a university on these subjects and Whoa. these were really really interesting because we learned uh, the history of fine arts which was mm. amazing about all of these paintings yeah. and about the music of uh, all different periods and the history of ballet and yeah that's what i remember the most about Vaganova education and it's yeah. really really nice because you know you go to perform in a ballet and you already know all about it exactly so it's really cool um it's funny you say that because i think learning the history of ballet is so important and i think in australia in particular dancers don't do that at this stage like it's just not a thing that a lot of dancers do but my ballet teacher she's not alive anymore but my first ballet teacher she used to give us so much information on the history of ballet so by the time i was in the royal ballet doing you know giselle and all these crazy amazing ballets i knew all about it from my teacher back in australia but normally if i hadn't have had her i probably wouldn't have known a lot I think also actually in our repertoire, like solos classes, we'd basically learn a lot to do with the ballets from like the professional dancers in the company because they would teach us some of these ballets. So when they'd come in and they'd teach us part of the, you know, nymphs in Giselle or something like that, they would tell us all these stories and about the ballet, which was good because it was so informative and in what we needed to learn at the time. Mm. It's important. Interesting. The most asked question, really. Mm -hmm. Typical day at your school. So I chose like during the first year and graduation year, mm. but maybe you could just like, um, I don't know, because for Vaganova it's different experiences of uh, first year and graduation year, really, really, really different. But you tell about mm. what. Yeah, of course. Want. So we used to live at our dorms, and maybe I'll talk about first year first because I really remember that. We used to live at our dorms and we'd wake up and we'd then basically catch the train, catch the tube and go straight at, into the Royal Ballet School. And once we'd get there, we'd have to check the timetable to see what studio we were in and I guess what time we needed to be there. So we'd basically check the calendar, check the timetable, go to the change rooms and none of us would arrive in our ballet gear. We used to always get changed once we got to the venue at the Royal Ballet School and we'd go to the change room then we'd go into the studio warm up for class for about an hour or half an hour just depending on what you wanted to do and a typical day would be we'd start class at 8 30 and we'd have our ballet class for about an hour and a half and like i mentioned earlier once we finished that class at 10 o'clock we'd then go into our schooling class and then some days that would swap so it would like alternate so some days we'd start with school some days we'd start with ballet class and then basically we'd have our lunch break and that's when we'd go across the bridge and some dancers would leave the building and get their lunch but we had an hour for lunch and we used to have this like recreation room at the Royal Ballet School and like we'd all grab our lunch and we'd all run back there and jump on the bean bags and just be kids you know and have have a bit of fun and interact and be social <laughs> and then basically we then finish the day off from about one o'clock or 1 30 to about 4 to 4 30. we'd have about three different classes like i mentioned with part de deux contemporary and the solos and variations but then where it got really tough is that when we were in our graduating year at the royal ballet school so in our final year if you were working with the company, like you know how I said they select certain dancers, you would then finish your classes at four o'clock and then basically you'd have about two to three hours spare. So you had to kind of stay in Covent Garden because at seven o'clock you had to check in for the performance and make sure you weren't going to be needed for that performance. And there was basically a document you always had to sign that you checked in and that you were there and you were there present and you checked basically the rehearsal schedule to make sure you weren't needed. And if you weren't needed, you could then go home. But then if you were, you'd have to maybe urgently get into rehearsal before the performance. Yeah, very different. And then sometimes you'd already know that you're performing, so you just get ready for the production and then you finish at 10 o'clock, get the tube back home. So it was quite tiring for yeah, someone so young. That's a lot. Yeah. That's really a lot. What about yours? 
Well, it's very, very different experience for the first year and for the graduation year, obviously. Yeah. Well, there's the set time for the class, for the ballet class, for every grade. And it's, it can be different for, like in the first grade, you'd have it at certain time and the second grade at the other time. And yeah. it's set for the whole year or randomly. Yeah. And I remember uh, three times that the class could be. Um, it could be at 9.20, starting yeah. at 9.20, then at 11.10, uh, and then at th uh, 1 p.m. Got it. So I've always wanted to have my class at 11 yeah. because it's the most comfortable time and that's when you have the class at the theater, the company. Yeah. But uh, during the first four years, I had my class at 9.20 in the morning. And then during the last three years, I, we had our class at 1 p.m., oh. which I never got the 11. And I was so sad. But yeah, so in the first grade, my experience was starting with ballet class, then yeah at 9.20 and finishing. Let me actually check my, because check I want schedule. this to be exact. <laughs> so I started with the class at 9.20 and then we finished at 10.55. Yeah. Then we'd have four general education subjects yeah. uh, till um, 2.35 p.m. Then Whoa. we'd have a lunch for 45 minutes. Then we'd have sometimes, uh, two times a week, we'd have a historical dance for 45 minutes. Mm. And then another two of the general education subjects till 5.22 p.m. Which we, wow. almost every day we finished at 5.22 p.m. Oh, 25 p.m., sorry. 5.25 yeah. p.m. And there was... Uh, it was just like a time of finishing the education. Sometimes yeah. we finished earlier, but most of the time it was just this exact time, like wow. 5, 25 p.m. That's so but interesting. During the graduation, so specific. Yeah. 525. Yeah, yeah, 525. <laughs> yeah. But uh, during the graduation year, it was different because we had our class at 1 p.m. Got it. And before that class, we'd be having two of the longer classes. Yeah. So like uh, the schooling classes, the yeah. like history of ballet, for example, and history of music. And then we'd have our class. Um, they, the teachers used to let us go a little bit earlier to warm up for the class. Oh, so, I see. So uh, we'd be having... Um, a little bit more time to warm up so the break in between the 15 minute break yeah. and then um, like the teacher would let us go like 10 minutes the kind teachers would, would let, let us, us go, go. <laughs> but the non-kind teachers would be like saying and uh, like uh, making us write down the homework Whoa. Um, so I also didn't mention that we also uh, always did homework and uh, there was a lot of homework actually, especially during the first five years at Vaganova. Yeah. Um, but uh, during the three last years, it was not as much, but I don't know, we just used to really study a lot as well, which is really helpful. It is. Because then it all stays. Exactly. But then after the class, we had our class at 1 p.m. and mm. as I mentioned, we stayed at a studio for almost like two and a half hours uh, and skipped mm. our lunch. And then we ran really quickly to our, like, maybe if we were lucky, we could like change a leotard for the next uh, uh, class. But sometimes we couldn't even have time for that. And yeah. we were always, always, always late for the uh, next subjects, for the partnering yeah. we had. A very kind teacher of mm -hmm. duet. He was always letting us be late. But the teachers for character and acting, they were really angry at us when we were late. Oh. So yeah, so we'd be having one day duet, one day character, one day acting. And then after that, also finishing at 5.25. Yeah. And then at 5.30, there would be rehearsals starting for the performances. It would either mm. be for the Nutcracker that mm, Vaganova Academy does the Mariinsky annually yeah. or for the graduation performances or wow. just like solo practice for the concerts at the yeah. school with our teachers. So we'd almost always be like during the graduation year, especially we'd always every day be rehearsing from 5.30 p.m. till like 7, 8 p.m. Whoa. So really? it was during graduation year. It was honestly really tough. That's a lot. But, That's a big day. Yeah. Yeah, and right now my sister Sonia is studying at Vaganova. Yeah. And right now I'm working at the theater, which is uh, known to be quite tough actually. Yeah. But I am honestly convinced that at Vaganova it's much harder. 
Really? Because like the now theater, you find the schedule, it a little bit easier. It can be really intense because you dance mm. um, all the time and you can have like many, many rehearsals and work nonstop for like six hours, six, seven yeah. hours. But at the same time, at Vaganova, you work for so much every day. And yeah. even though you have theoretical subjects, you still, you start at nine, you finish at like 7.30, which wow. is crazy. That's but a it's, lot. It's, it's a great school of life. I, I actually can't believe how long the days are. I mean, it's sort of similar, but I guess we always knew that like you'd finish at 4.30 and that would be your finish time unless you were working with the company. But yours went on for very long. Like that, that's quite late to be dancing. The crazy one, the most stressful part, exams. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were quite lucky at the Royal Ballet School because we only really had to do, when I was there, one exam a year. And it would happen around June and it would be right before like the graduation performance at the big like end of year. So in, and I guess in London, in the Royal Ballet School, this doesn't happen in Australia, but the year starts in September and then basically it ends in July. Whereas in Australia, it starts in January, finishes in December. So for me, it was quite different, like adjusting to that. But our exams would be in June. And they were, they were quite tough because we'd get taught the work about three weeks before. And I guess their goal wasn't really to make it perfect. It was more so to make sure that we knew the work. And I guess as a dancer, we had to kind of make it our own. So if you'd been listening for the whole year, then you'd do really well. But if you hadn't been listening <laughs> and you weren't working on your technique 24 seven, then okay, you probably wouldn't get the best mark. And I remember with our marking system back then, it might've changed now, but back then they used to mark us not out of percentage, like it wouldn't be out of a hundred. It'd be like A minus, A plus, B, C, like you'd get marked like that. And then the director would give you like a little comment of something that you should work on for the following year. And we used to have to do exams for every single I guess subject you could say we were studying, which was obviously the ballet, the contemporary, the Pilates, the solos and variations. So we had an exam for every single one of them, which was exciting, which I think is good because then it kind of keeps you accountable for every single thing that you're doing on a day to day basis at the Royal Ballet School. What about you? Did you have how many exams? Uh, well, we also have like one exam a year, but okay. I remember passing exams at Vaganova is honestly, was honestly the scariest part of my life, the scariest experience of my life. Like, honestly, really? it is so scary. Like the commission board were watching you and you just being like almost bare, wearing nothing and you have to show your skills and you know, preparing those combinations because at Vaganova, teachers themselves prepare the combinations mm. with the class. Um, and we would start preparing like uh, two months before the exam. And it was a difficult process because you want to show all of your students in the best way possible. Yeah. So it's like, and you also, the teacher also needs to show like the beautiful combinations, like how the teacher is teaching, obviously, exactly. and it's like choreographic abilities and to choose the music. And we used to prepare a lot for the exams. And during the graduation year, the exams, well, for the first graders, they would be like in May. Yeah. And then it would move uh, more and more um, earlier. So earlier oh, okay. and earlier and earlier. And um, at the graduation year, we passed our exam uh, at the beginning of April. Yeah. So, so that we had a little bit more time to prepare for the graduation performance Got afterwards, yeah. which the performance is in June, uh, in the end of June. Okay, gotcha. And yeah, so we'd be getting marks. So from two to five, which two you get knocked out. Oh. And then three is mediocre, four is uh, like okay, and five is uh, excellent, obviously. Wow. And when I got accepted to academy, they still had this system with two, uh, like three minus, three yeah. plus, four minus, four plus, and four. But then it got changed, and we only had like uh, even One, numbers. One, two, three. Oh, okay, so, got yeah. you. Did you get and five? You'd be very happy. Hmm? Did you get five? Uh, yeah, during graduation, yeah, I was lucky enough to get five, yeah. It was, it was a happy moment for me, definitely. 
but Very yeah good. the exams were tough really yeah, like tough. you know waiting for the marks because we'd pass our exam and then we'd be waiting for the marks we'd be waiting for the other group of girls to pass the exam and then we'd be waiting for the commission board to really discuss and this feel of waiting for your mark you I know, know this this feeling of constantly having this like in your stomach these butterflies it's hard we, and someone um, you know I yeah. don't know about you, but our marks were sent back home. So my marks were always sent back to Australia. Ah. Oh, yeah, oh, and I was okay. still in London. Interesting. Your marks so sent... during the computer? Yeah, well, no, oh. it was by paper. Mm. Yeah, it would get so all So you had to sent... wait for a long time? Long time, yeah, I know. Oh, no. Back in the old days, oh, 10 is... years ago. <laughs> no, this is terrible. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Well, we got our marks like right away that same day, but yeah. we waited for the commission board to go out of the discussion room and then and our then... teacher would tell us the marks. Wow. Which, you know, we were always sitting be in front of this discussion room. Yeah. And we were waiting and, you know, someone exiting the room and someone that is not uh, a member of the commission board and you're like, these butterflies, yeah, and, and it's, it's like, not that, and it's not that, yeah. Oof, how it was scary. so nerve-wracking. and See, I our know. exams weren't, weren't too scary. Like nearly everybody would get accepted into the next year, but there would be some times when, you know, someone wouldn't because they were injured or something drastic happened. Like. They didn't look the same from when they were accepted to the next year at the end of that year. And, you know, it just depended on every single individual. But most of the time, everyone was accepted. Mm. Yeah. During the last years, actually, also at Vaganova, almost everyone got accepted to the next year. But mm. during the first years, a lot of people were knocked out. Yeah. So it was really, really stressful. And I don't know, just at Vaganova, um, they the atmosphere almost made us think that the marks were like the most important things in our lives yeah which right got now you. as i think about it it's not really that important because no, the it's most like, important thing is yeah. to, if you get accepted to the company or not yeah. but at that time we were like all only thinking about our marks exactly your yeah crazy. your marks were very high priority whereas now it seems like such a small little component but also very important but it's good yeah. because it meant that you obviously cared about how, how well you did and you really wanted to do well, yeah. which is yeah. good. How cool. Oh, it brings back so I know. many memories. So many I memories, can. all right. Oh. <laughs> performance, we have performances. I'm very curious to know if your school um, has like any performances that you do on your own or like graduation performances. Does yeah. that happen often? Or like the concerts of people yeah. doing solos and stuff? Of course. So basically, yes, the Royal Ballet School does have performances. So basically we'd have our big end of year graduation performance. And no matter what level you were in, so whether you were in your first year, second year, third year, everyone would participate in that unless you were injured or something wasn't right. Um, and basically you might have seen there's the Royal Ballet School are really famous for their defile, which is when they have all the different levels in like really straight lines. I'm sure there's going to be a photo on the screen and everyone would come together, the whole school, even White Lodge, so the lower school and the upper school, which is really fun. So we'd obviously do our graduation performance and usually it'd be like a mini ballet within that performance. So for example, when I was there, it was concerto, the um, mm. you know amazing ballet called Beautiful. concerto. Again, I'll insert some photos. So basically we had to perform concerto and I was doing the third movement and I remember being so tired, honestly. <laughs> this particular, I mean, I, Maria, I know you've performed very, very amazing roles, but this one was, it just was so exhausting. Anyway, so I basically did that for that graduation performance, but then also at the Royal Ballet School, we'd have a thing called Solos Evening. And basically the director would pick about 12 dancers in the entire school to perform a solo in front of all of our sponsors and donors and parents that lived in, I guess, London that could come and watch it. And I was lucky enough to always do the solos evening, which was so nice. So you got to pick a solo. So I would always do Gemzadi. 
and you'd perform it and it was always just like a really fun feeling because you got selected to do that. So obviously the director thought that you were at a level that they wanted to showcase you and then um, yeah, that was pretty much it, those two. And then on top of that would be the company performances and that would pretty much be it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where would these performances actually be happening, like these graduation? Oh, yeah. And so the graduation one would happen in June, July, and the solos evening would normally happen, I think it was towards November. It's funny doing this video because you think back on so many memories, but I think it was towards November, December. And as I said, always the company performances, they would happen all year round because the Royal Ballet perform, you know, 15 different ballets, sometimes more, a year. So they would always need dancers, like all the time. So yeah, that was like just constant, which was great because I really missed the stage when I went from doing so many competitions in Australia to going to the Royal Ballet School where they do, you know, very minimal performing. So when I was performing with the company a lot more, I was so much happier because I was, you know, on stage more. What about you, Maria? Tell me, how many performances did you do? We did, we were really lucky to do a lot. And during the first years, you would be having these little concerts of performing the solos, the variations you would prepare mm. with your teacher. Uh, at the school theater, we had a very, very small like venue at the school, the school theater. Mm. And we would be performing like little variations, little easy solos. But Good. then, Vaganova also does Nutcracker at the Mariinsky. Whoa. All of the um, roles are danced by the students. So the um, Nutcracker by Vasily Vainonen and yeah. the full ballet performed by the um, Lil dancers. And um, you'd be, depending on your grade, you'd be dancing either like the main role yeah. or like the people um, at the Stahlbaum's house or like yeah. the mice, the boys, all of the boys were performing the mice and the snowflakes or the rose walls for the ballet is when it gets really tough because it's rehearsed a lot, mm. the snowflakes and the rose walls. And during the last couple of years, you get to perform in this quarter ballet and it's, yeah. it was one of the toughest memories because rehearsing snowflakes and performing them was a challenge. Yeah, I But bet. yeah, so here's Nutcracker. I was lucky enough to perform the doll when I was in the fifth grade, oh which was God. really, really interesting and really sweet. Yeah. And then the snowflakes, then the duo of snowflakes, so mm, kind of many roles and it was really interesting. And also, of course, I was lucky to perform Mary, Masha, the princess, the main oh, role wow. during yeah. my graduation year, which was really magical. Mm. So yeah, here's Nutcracker. And of course, graduation performance is also happening at the Marinsky yeah. uh, each year. And of course, it's to showcase the graduates' uh, skills. Yeah. And uh, there would be some ballets chosen for this evening and different ballets every year, like one act ballets or just one act from three act ballet. Mm. So when I was graduating, but also the people from other classes participate in yeah. the graduation performance because they obviously needed a lot of people exactly. in it. And when I was graduating, we were doing First, um, I was performing in dances of ours uh, from Jaconda, from opera, yeah. Jaconda. Then we were doing Sweet on Blanc, oh, yes, which I was an amazing one, yeah. experience, like getting to know Lifar's choreography and this very French style. Yeah. I don't even know how we got to perform that because it's such a difficult ballet oh, and yeah. how we got the rights to perform it, to be <laughs> honest. But, but it you was did. <laughs> incredible, honestly. And then we performed the third act from Paquita, oh, which was also been very amazing. interesting. Yeah, and all of the, a lot of the variations, a lot of the solos for the mm. girls in Paquita, so it was really interesting. Yeah. But yeah, so the graduation performances, and then we also had quite a lot of other projects, to be honest. Yeah. Because I remember we went on tour to Tokyo twice. Yeah. Uh, uh, and we performed Fairy Doll, Ballet Fairy Doll, it, which yeah. we also performed at the Marinsky Theatre a couple of times. Yeah. Which was also very interesting. And then we performed Awakening of Flora, Pas de at uh, in Tokyo as well. We went on tour for v to Vienna, to uh, Turihen, uh, mm. Lausanne, also to Naples and to Moscow, obviously quite a lot of 
Facebook times. So, so they it was took interesting. You we performed a lot. Yeah. But maybe even too much. But for us, it was always a very interesting experience because we missed a lot of classes because we yeah. were going on tour everywhere and performing everywhere. Actually, but at the same time, I, for- I forgot the Royal Ballet, they do tour, the Royal Ballet School tour. Because when you mentioned just then, yeah, because we end up going to Tokyo, um, all through America, like all the smaller areas in America, which was awesome. And then also New York. Actually, I forgot about that. But I don't, I don't think the Royal Ballet School do that anymore. I think that was something that our director at the time had organised, but I don't think they do it anymore, which is sad. Mm-hmm. I might be wrong. Comment below. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember it was always magical to perform and I wanted, always wanted to perform, maybe even if it was not needed at that time, we needed yeah. to do more schooling, but to perform was always more fun. I oh, don't know. always. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Being on yeah. stage, can't get anything better. Yes, hey. yes, true. Dorms. Yeah. Yay. So, that all about dorms. Dorms. Okay, so at the Royal Ballet School, in your first year and second year when I was there, you had dorms that you had to stay at. It wasn't like... You could go and live with your parents if you wanted to. It was like compulsory. You had to live at these dorms. And basically there would be a girl's side and a boy's side. And you know, there's all these different stories of girls climbing on the roof to get to the boy's side. (laughs) Shocking. But actually that never happened in our year, but apparently the year after us was really bad. So anyway. They were naughty. But yeah, so basically with these dorms, it was quite interesting because in the first year, it was about 30 minutes away from the actual Royal Ballet School. But it was quite good because it meant in your first year, even though you're quite young, like I'd moved from Australia to London and I was all by myself, but I had to basically learn how to travel on the tube, on the train, like learn my way around really early on, which I think gave me like a lot of independence. And I think for any other student that was international, it would have done the same. So we used to travel every day to the Royal Ballet School. But then when I was quickly moved up into second year, I then basically had to move my, like where I was living to the other dorm, which was at Covent Garden. So the second years would live at Covent Garden, which was amazing because you could just walk straight to the Royal Ballet School and that was really interesting for me because I almost found my friendship group in the first year and then all of a sudden they said oh now you're going to second year so then I had to like find new friends in second year and it it was really like kind of scary because it felt very just I guess nerve-wracking and they were all older than me but they ended up being lovely so it was of course fine but the dorms they basically they don't cook for you so you have to still cook by yourself it's a big shared kitchen so there's 12 to 15 girls using the same kitchen you'd have to share a room with another girl as well so I was sharing with a girl called Raina I still remember her still to this day so Raina and I were sharing a room and everyone had to share with someone So it was sort of interesting. I think it's good like learning from a very young age, how to be independent, how to live like, you know, I guess by yourself in another country. And I think you learn a lot of skills, like life skills from that. What about you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting that you had to live at the dorms because we don't have that in Russia. But I, me personally, I didn't live at the dorms because I was born in St. Petersburg and I stayed at my house Mm. the whole time. But we actually have dorms and Mm. if you are from the other city, which actually about like 60-70% of the students at Vaganova live at the dorms because they are coming from the other cities and so yeah but the dorms are really just like a part of the building yeah so very very close you just walk um, outside for like two seconds and you're at Vaganova and, you're there. Wow. and you pay for for the dorms but um, then you get a free um, like breakfast lunch and dinner at mm. the canteen at Vaganova and like even the meals in between Got which it. is sweet uh, the food is not very good, but you'd be getting some food at least. <laughs> Literally. So, yeah. Wow. But um, actually, you don't have to stay at dorms if you don't want to. Yeah. But, uh, you know, some people from St. Petersburg, uh, some are lucky to live in the center, but some are 
some had to during the process of education some had to like uh, travel for two hours um, on the tube and like Whoa. on the transport on the public transport and i can't imagine they had to like wake up at 6 a.m so and early. then like do some homework on their way to the school and, get and it then done. have all of the classes and can you imagine like finishing the rehearsal at 8 p.m and then, and going then still home. having to do homework and then going on the tube for two hours to your house which is so crazy That's i had classmates my classmates do that during the education and Whoa. i have so much respect for them but yeah but i was lucky to live in the center and like just 10 minutes walking from vaganova so which convenient. is really really amazing that's but very yeah. lucky it's definitely lucky hey i'm excited for this question the myths one most memorable story, I don't know, just like any funny stories or mm. legends, myths or like anything you have very memorable about Royal Ballet School. Yeah, mine's a bit more of like a scary, it's not, not, a, not the best story in terms of like it was a little bit at the time, but it's something that will always stick with me and it always stuck with me when I joined the company. So basically at the school, in your graduate year, you get to take class with the company every four weeks. It was on like a rotation cycle. And again, it was just like another experience for the Royal Ballet School graduates. You get to take class with the Royal Ballet Company. And they kind of gave us like an etiquette talk and they sort of, they sat us all down and they said, okay, there's a few things you have to know. You need to still wear your uniform. You need to wait outside of the studio until the company class starts. And as soon as they start learning plies, you run in and you find a spare spot and that's how you're gonna get your spot at the bar. They said, do not enter before that because it's out of respect to the company members. But anyway, <laughs> I remember one year, it, wasn't, it didn't happen to me, it was one of my friends. I think maybe she just forgot, I, I'm not sure. Anyway, she just walked in and she just sat in like a good spot at the bar and she sat down and she's stretching and warming up and I kid you not, this company member walked up to her and just literally stared at her like this until she got up wow. and left. <laughs> no. I know. That and would then be so I think scary. I know. And I think I think actually she told our graduate teacher and was like, Oh, this happened to me. I feel so bad, like I forgot. And the graduate teacher gave us another talk and said, just a reminder, you have to make sure you respect the company members first and they need to find their spot on the bar because you could be standing in you know, a, a famous ballerina's spot and it's out of respect to them, you don't want to take their spot at the bar. So I just, I remember that because it was a lesson that I learned and then, you know, from this day onwards, it's something that I think is really important that I guess when you're a student and you're still learning about the environment, those company members, they are, they are very important, you know, they're important people and it's important that you respect them. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, so interesting. Yeah. Actually, uh, for us, if, if you join Marion's Key, this like the exact same thing happens, but when you join the company, so it's after you graduate. Actually, uh, we should do comparing companies. I uh, think. Yeah, Guys, we should. Guys, comment down below if you want us to compare the companies, because I think it'd be really fun as well. That would be so, interesting, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, but actually it happens when you join the company already. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, my story yeah, is a little bit different. Um, we always had that legend yeah. Because the building is quite old and it is very, very big. You'd yeah. always get like a little bit like of wind, you know, the wind that opens the doors. Oh my God. And sometimes the old doors would open by themselves. <gasps> and oh, I got the, goosebumps. The teachers were always telling, yeah, the teachers would be always telling that it's the ghost of Vaganova entering the, in, entering the studio oh or entering gosh. the class. Yeah, and it's like this, uh, this, I don't know, silly legend just stayed in my mind yeah. and it's like the legend of Vaganova Ballet Academy that the ghost of Vaganova that's is always so cool. walking around the studio so yeah but that's awesome though like I mean I, I personally I believe in ghosts I don't know maybe not do you guys believe in ghosts <laughs> do you believe in ghosts <laughs> comment down below oh, no. <laughs> another yeah, comment well, yeah <laughs> do Vagana you believe ghosts 
So you, you, maybe you could meet her at night so at Vagana, I don't know. Whoa, <laughs> who knows though? Like that's yeah. kind of freaky, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's scary. Like, you know, meeting her because she was a very, very strict teacher and yeah. she was really tough for, with her students and with the girls that were there at her class at Vaganova mm. and because she taught at Vaganova obviously yeah and uh, yeah so can you imagine like meeting her and That's... her telling you like you need to watch your fifth position or something like you know in Lift horror, your arm up horror, horror movie horror story That's but at the so same time funny. it would be inspiring so I yeah know. I think so too like that's crazy isn't it what good stories it's so yeah, cool. Yeah, and yours is really, really interesting as well. I know, very interesting. But, you know, we live and we learn, don't we? Hasn't this been good? I mean, I think it's so amazing hearing about two separate amazing schools yeah. and they both got their differences, don't they? Yes. It was so interesting to talk to you about it. I, I mean, th this exceeded my expectations, definitely. You too, Maria. So That's many amazing. interesting facts. Thank you so much for joining. Anytime. And, yeah, Thank you. It was Thanks really, for having really me nice meeting you. Hopefully, I could can meet you in person sometime I know. soon. I'll come yeah. to Russia. I'll come to Russia. <laughs> I've oh, been great. to Russia before. Oh, you've been to yeah. Russia? We, oh, really? Yeah, with the Royal Ballet, we performed. It was at the Bolshoi Theatre, though. Oh, wow. Yeah, back in, I think oh, it was 2010 or something. Yeah, wow. I loved it. It was so amazing. Such a different place. So cool. Yeah, yeah. Bolshoi yeah. is gorgeous. But come to Mariinsky. Come watch Mariinsky performances. I will. Okay, I'll, I'll message you when I'm there. To watch. Yeah, if you ever are in St. Petersburg, just please come to the performance. Of course. It will be so amazing. Thank you so much once again for joining. Maybe Anytime. we could do some more videos soon in the future. I of know course. we're going to do a video on your channel. Of course. So I'm pretty excited about that. Can't and wait. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. And subscribe to Claudia if you're not subscribed already. For some reason, she's amazing. She does <laughs> such amazing content and so interesting and funny. And also yeah. educating as well all of the exercises on her channel. So I'll leave a link Aww. down below. Thanks, Maria. Thank you Thank so you. much, Claudia, for joining and giving all of Anytime. the amazing information. And yeah, guys, comment down below what maybe you want to see more collabs yeah. with Claudia. Uh, ask your questions and yeah thanks so much for watching yep. we love you and i love will you see guys. you in the next video thank you so much claudia once again anytime and bye Maria. bye guys thank you bye guys